everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Earl Grey Cup Cozy. This is a beginner crochet pattern and this tutorial is going to be uh, filmed with the beginner in mind. So we are going to go through this pattern step by step. I'm going to show you how to do each of the stitches and techniques that are used in this pattern. The free written copy of this pattern can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and the direct link is in the description of this video. So this is the cup cozy that we're going to be making here today. This cup cozy was designed to fit uh, my ceramic mug, but it'll also fit uh, the other disposable cups that you'll find at many restaurants, uh, as well as other sizes. If you would like to change the size of this cup cozy, you can use any multiple of stitches for your foundation chain. Today, today for this pattern, I'm going to be using two colors of yarn. Both of these are cotton weight, which hold up to heat very, very well. I'm going to be using the Bernat Handicrafter Cotton by Yarn Inspirations. You can substitute this yarn for any cotton of your choice. All you need to do is look for that number four on the label. That will tell you that it's a medium worsted weight yarn. You're going to need about 40 yards of your color A, which today I'll be working with this French blue, and about 10 yards of your color B, and today I'll be using the off-white. For this pattern, you're also going to need a five millimeter, or you can also look for that H8 uh, crochet hook, as well as a pair of scissors, a yarn needle for finishing off, and a stitch marker. This pattern is going to be worked in a technique called continuous rounds. So you're going to need a stitch marker to mark your first stitch in each round. So as I mentioned, the free written crochet pattern is on my blog. Uh, as well as in the description, you'll also find direct links to uh, each of the yarn and crochet hooks that I'm using in the video today. And, um, and the crochet pattern is there as well. So thank you so much for joining me while you're here. I invite you to take a look around. There's lots of other free crochet patterns on my channel as well as stitch tutorials and, uh, and the like. So thank you so much for joining me. Let's grab our hooks and our yarn and we'll get started making this Earl Grey Cup Cozy. To begin your Earl Grey Cup Cozy, you're going to start by making a slip knot. To make my slip knot, I simply take the two ends, this is my short end, this is my working end, I cross over, stick my fingers through the loop, grab a hold of my working end, and pull. Place your yarn on your hook, and just bring it to be a little bit tighter. You're then going to make a foundation chain, and your foundation chain is going to be a total of 30 chain stitches and to make your chain you're going to place your yarn over your hook and simply draw your hook through uh, that loop that was on it. You're going to repeat until you have a total of 30 chains. There's 10, 20, 30. Once you have your 30 chains worked, being careful not to twist the chain, so I like to run my fingers down along the chain, you're going to go back to that first stitch and insert your hook and join with a slip stitch. So into that first stitch, yarn over, pull your yarn through both loops. And that's going to join to make a ring. 
At this point, you're going to want to have your stitch marker ready because we are going to start working our rounds and we're going to be working into our uh, foundation chain. Now, when I work into my chains, it's all personal preference, but I like to work into these back bumps on my chain stitches because it gives me a nice finished edge underneath. So you're going to start by chaining one, yarn over and pull through. You're then going to work a single crochet into that same stitch as joining. So into the same stitch that you joined in, insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two loops. That's your single crochet. You're going to repeat those steps in each chain stitch in each of these back bumps all the way around. So into the next one, insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Do that all the way around your chain. At the end of this round, you should have a total of 30 single crochet stitches. Working my final stitch in round one and you'll have a piece that looks just like this. You're then going to uh, continue working into the first stitch of the next round. Sometimes uh, at the end of a round you would join with a slip stitch but we're not going to do that today. We're going to work in continuous rounds all the way around. So you're going to jump to that first stitch and work a single crochet into that first stitch. So inserting your hook under both loops there at the top of your stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop and pull it pretty tight because you don't want to have any gaps there. Then yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. Now this is your first stitch. At this time, you're going to want to take your stitch marker and just insert it into that first stitch so that you don't uh, don't lose your place. You're then going to continue to single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Repeat that in each stitch all the way around until you come back to your stitch marker and do not work in that stitch yet just uh, complete this second round. I'm working in my final stitch, so the stitch right before my stitch marker of round two. Once you complete round two, you're going to go ahead and start round three. And round three is exactly the same. You're going to single crochet in the next stitch and each stitch all the way around. So take out your stitch marker, work a single crochet into that stitch, and then just remember to put your stitch mark marker back in so you don't forget where that first stitch is. Then continue around, single crochet into each stitch all the way around. the end of round three. You're going to begin round four, take out your stitch marker, and you're going to begin to uh, by working two stitches into that first stitch. So we're going to do a little bit of an increase. We've had 30 stitches in each round. We're now going to bump that up to 31 stitches. And the way we're going to do that is by working two stitches into this first stitch. So insert your hook, work your first single crochet stitch, replace your stitch marker, and then into that same stitch, so insert your hook in the same place, work one more single crochet stitch. You're then going to work one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, 
you will have a total of 31 single crochet stitches. For round five, you're going to remove your stitch marker, work one single crochet into that first stitch, replace your stitch marker, and then work a single crochet stitch into each stitch all the way around. Now at the end of this round, we are going to cha uh, change color. So work your single crochet stitches all the way up to that last stitch, but don't work your last stitch yet. And I will show you how I like to change colors or add a new ball of yarn into the middle of a project. So go ahead, single crochet into each stitch all the way around to that final stitch in the round. So at the end of round five, you have one stitch left here and we're going to want to switch to our color B. So what you're going to do is you're going to insert your hook into that final stitch before your round six yarn over and draw up a loop. You can then drop your color A, pick up your color B and place it on your hook and then simply draw it through the two loops. You're then ready if you just pull it tight a little bit there, you are then ready to start your round six with your new color. For round six, you're going to remove your stitch marker and now with the new color, single crochet into that first stitch. If you would like, you can single crochet over top of the tail of your color B so you don't need to weave it in later. But single crochet into that first stitch, replace your stitch marker and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Now it's up to you because I was only going to go up two rows, I leave my color A attached so that I don't have as many ends to weave in later on and uh, then just pick it up when I come back around. So I'm just going to continue single crocheting. I'm working over top of my color B tail so that I don't have to weave it in later on. But you're just going to single crochet all the way around. When you come around to round seven, you're going to remove your stitch marker. Simply work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Remember to put that marker back in after your first stitch. So we're still working with our color B. Work one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch, you're going to switch back to your color A. So at the end of round seven, you're going to want to switch back to your color A. So insert your hook into that final stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, two loops on your hook, drop your color B, pick up your color A that was kind of just hanging there, place it on your hook and pull tight. You're now ready to start round eight. For round eight, we're going to work another increase round. You're going to remove your stitch marker there briefly. If you would like, at this time, you can work over top of your color B tail so that you don't need to weave it in later on. You're going to start by working two single crochets into this first stitch. So there's one. Replace your stitch marker. And two into that same stitch. You're then going to continue around for round eight, working one single crochet stitch into each stitch all the way around.
once you have worked enough stitches over top of your tail, you are free to kind of fasten it off. And I'll just show you how to do that here before I go too much further. So I've worked over top of my color B tail there. So it's quite secure. I'm then just going to take my scissors and snip it off so that it's no longer in the way. And now just continue with my round eight. At the end of round eight, for the next three rounds, I'm going to continue working with my color A. And I'm going to work one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So work that first stitch, place my stitch marker on and work one stitch in each stitch all the way around. And you're going to do that for a total of three rounds. So this is round nine, 10, and 11. Just keep going around and, uh, and then meet me back here after you've completed those three rounds. I'm working my final stitch in round 11. So this is what your work should look like so far. For round 12, you're going to work one final increase round so remove your stitch marker into that first stitch, work two single crochet stitches. And then one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. the end of your round 12 you can remove your stitch marker and you're then going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch so insert your hook into that first stitch yarn over draw up a loop and draw it through the loop on your hook you can then yarn over and pull it through clip your end and pull it all the way through to fasten off. We're now going to weave in our two little tails here. So we're going to grab a yarn needle thread your yarn through your yarn needle and then I always like to do this from the back but I simply weave my yarn needle under the stitches from the back all the way around uh, or at least for a few inches around this top row this top round so I'm just pulling it through making sure it's nice and tight sometimes if I had a more slippery yarn or uh, an object that would be uh, need, have more motion to it and whatnot, I might uh, weave it in and out a little bit more among the different rows, but here I'm just going through the top a couple of inches. I can then fasten off my little tail and then go to the bottom one and do the same thing. I always look at it from the back. And I'm just going to weave my yarn through the stitches on this bottom round. Once you feel like you will win it through enough, you can remove your needle. Clip your final end and your Earl Grey Cup Cozy is complete. So thank you so much for joining me on this 
crochet tutorial for beginners on how to make the Earl Grey Cut Cozy. And uh, once again, I invite you to subscribe, check out some of the other videos that you'll find here, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, happy crocheting! Bye!